consider all the works I hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe displayed. God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart! Then I shall bow in humble adoration And together we cry out to our Lord, O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and just deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am truly sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy 
of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Now, friends, Almighty God, His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. In the stead by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, as a Paul, an ordained servant of the Word, forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together for our Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray together. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go and be seated, friends, for our first read today. This comes from James chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you to court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so act, as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to stand for our gospel reading from Mark chapter 7. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Cyprenetian by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Go ahead and have a seat, friends, for our children's message. Hi everybody, it's Melody. Welcome to another children's sermon. I'm happy to be here with you today. We're in my favorite spot in Target, the school supply section. To me as a teacher, it's great to see this stuff out. That means we're coming back to school and I'm so excited. But I wanna tell you that as we pick out school supplies, um, you might have some favorites of things. So follow me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you some questions. So I'm sure on your school list, you might have things like colored pencils, you might have pencils, you might have crayons, all things you probably have at home left from last year because you didn't use all your supplies, right? So if I asked you today, you could have, if you could have this, if you wanted this box of colored pencils, look inside, 
perfectly fine, right? But getting a little dull. Look at this one, this one's really dull. The box is getting all beaten up, you see that? So you could have these and use these again, or you can have this new box of 50 sharpened uh, colored pencils. Check that out. Which one would be your favorite? Which one would you choose? I don't know about you. I'd choose this one. This would be my favorite. All right, so how about crayons? Unless you're in high school or middle school, crayons are gonna be on your list. So here I have some crayons that we used last year at school. If you look in my baggie, I don't even have the box anymore because you know that box doesn't last long. Here's this one, black, not very sharp. As a matter of fact, that's the end. It's not very sharp. The, the um, paper's coming off. We got some in here that are very dull, some that are broken. You see that blue one there? There's a green one and a black one. Not very nice. Do they do the job of coloring the things that you need to color? Yeah, they work. But my favorite would be this brand new box of crayons, all in their color order, right? And it comes with a sharpener, so as it gets dull, I can make them sharp again. So I would choose this, this would be my favorite. And then of course, everybody's gonna have pencils on their list. This one's perfectly fine, it's still fairly big. Some students of mine try to get their pencils down to this size. I don't know why they do that, but they do. This one, the eraser's almost gone, the pencil is dull or the lead is dull. So you could have this one, or you could have a box of these brand new, really pointy leaded pencils with great erasers. Which one would you choose? This would be my favorite. I have to have a sharp pencil when I write. So, all right, Melody, why are you talking to us about your favorite school supplies? Well, this is why, because in our lesson for today in the book of James, God talks about how dangerous it is, it is for us to play favorites. A lot of times we want to be friends with the popular people or the people that are wearing the right clothes um, or the people that know the right people. Or maybe if we're the captains for a, a dodgeball team, we wanna pick the people that we know the best, okay? God tells us he doesn't play favorites and we shouldn't play favorites either. God loves us all equally. And even though we're different, even though we might be tall or short, or we might be old, or we might be young. God loves us all equally. He doesn't have a favorite child. And he wants us to not play favorites either. He wants us to love others and be kind to others, no matter uh, what they wear, no matter what they look like, and even no matter what they act like. It is our job as Christians to spread that love and to be kind to everyone. So keep that in mind as we go to school this year, as you choose your supplies, maybe you have supplies at home that you can reuse from last year because they still do the same job as these new supplies. Um, but more importantly, as you go to school and you get back to school with people that maybe you know, maybe you don't know, that you are kind to all people and you don't choose favorites. All right, let's bring it in, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to not play favorites. Help us to love all people like you love us. We pray this in your name, amen.
some kids, kids we know more than kids we don't know? In other words, why do we show partiality? Our first reading today from James simply calls us out. James says this in chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers and sisters, show no favoritism. Show no favoritism as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to show no favoritism. Not to judge others just because they may look different. Not to judge others just because they may have had different life experiences. Not to judge others because they may not be committed as to the faith as we are. Not to judge others because they may have... And you can fill in the blank. You can fill in the blank just like I can because we've all done this. Yes, every single person here, every single person watching right now has done this. We have judged others. We have shown favoritism to some for one reason or another. Ouch. Truth hurts. Now, as we finish up our teaching series, The Miracles of Jesus, we see Jesus teaching this lesson. But before we get into the miracle, we, we see that he is with the Pharisees and, and the scribes, and they are upset. They're upset at Jesus and his disciples because they did not wash their hands. They didn't wash their hands. They were supposed to wash their hands. It's tradition. It's supposed to be done this way, and since they didn't do it, they're eating with defiled hands. Jesus calls them out. Jesus calls them out and says, look, guys, it's what comes out of a person that defiles him. We're in Mark chapter 7, beginning with verse 20. It says this, Jesus said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. These evil things that come from a person's heart is what defiles them. So it's not what they eat. It's not who they are. It's not where they live. It's not where they come from. It's not how they are raised. It's not how they are dressed. It's the evil inclinations, the sinful behaviors that people do that defiles them. And Jesus teaches us here that it's useless to make excuses on why we are so judgy, on why we discriminate, on why we show 
this region, and he enters a house. And what happens? Mark tells us that right after Jesus enters this house, immediately a woman barges in and falls down at his feet. We'll get there in a second. But let's start by understanding this. Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew that R and R was not going to be an option for him at this time. He deliberately went to this region. He purposely went to this house. He did it to put himself in the path of this woman. This woman with this urgent need. All she did was push aside Jesus' schedule. But he knew that. And he had planned it. He had put himself in her way for her sake. And now this is where it gets interesting. And where we can start to bring it back to James. This woman who has barged into this home was out of line. Way out. And it's not just the fact that she was a woman coming into this house, but she was a Gentile. She was not supposed to be there. She did not belong. You could play a game, which one of these is not like the other? And the answer would easily be her. But there she is, this Gentile woman laying down at the feet of Jesus. For some, she did not belong right next to him. But guess what? She didn't care what others thought. She didn't care. She had one reason to get to Jesus. She had one reason to get to Jesus, and that was to get the help. The help that she needed for her daughter, who was possessed by a demon. You see, she knew. She believed that this man, that this Jesus, that he had the power to help her. And verse 26 tells us what happens next. She begged. She begged Jesus to heal her daughter. Now, normally we think we know what happens right away next, right? Jesus heals the child. <laughs> not this time. This time he does not heal the girl instantly. This time, Jesus, who knew what he was doing, responds. He says in verse 27, let the little children be fed first. For it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now this response by Jesus is going to be met with some great approval by some. The Pharisees, the Jewish scribes, they're thinking, yeah, you tell her, Jesus. You put her in her place. Two, 
He will serve the people at the table first, that being the Jewish people. And he may never even get to the Gentiles. So, so while we are left right now wondering, what in the world did we just read? This woman answers him. She had the courage to barge into this house unannounced. But not only to barge into this house unannounced, she had the courage to throw herself at the feet of Jesus. And so now, along with this courage, comes great faith. Friends, that's why she is so quick to answer. She has this courageous faith. There is nothing timid inside her. She heard the words of Jesus right out of his mouth, and they did not face her. For she answered there in verse 28, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Her response is not a sharp snap back to Jesus. It's not a snarky comment. She seizes the opportunity, takes the words of Jesus himself, and in great faith, with great humility, says that even the family pet gets some crumbs. She knows. She knows that with this answer, with Jesus' response, he is not rejecting her, but he is giving her an opportunity to express her faith. And so, here's this woman, barging into this unannounced house, laying on the ground, who now responds with great courage, with unwavering determination, seeking help for her daughter. She knew, she knew, friends, that she could not demand anything of Jesus. She knew that she was completely at his mercy. She knew all the social norms that she was breaking. But she also knew something that others could not see. She knew her heart, and she knew her faith, for she believed in Jesus. And Jesus' response in verse 29 shows us just that. Jesus says, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. This woman had great faith. But understand, friends, it wasn't the faith that brought the healing to her daughter. The healing is due to Jesus. His compassion, his love, his grace, his Her words express the faith. Her words express that close relationship that she receives from his gift. And that faith that this woman has is such a sharp contrast to the Pharisees, to the disciples who fail to understand Jesus' teaching day in and day out, but not her. She gets it. She gets it. Her courageous faith, her unswerving faith in who Jesus is, is what results in the daughter's full recovery. Jesus gave up his rest so that this woman, her daughter, and the entire family could have their own rest. Way more than the crumb that she just received, isn't it? She's just received the whole pot, the whole loaf of bread. She's just received the whole of Jesus' care and love for her. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
right there. Jesus shows to the Jews that he has come for all people. Even the Gentile dogs. Friends, his death on the cross for you It's also for your neighbor. His death on the cross is for those that we are quick to judge. His death on the cross is for those that we overlook because, well, they're not like us. That gift from God through Christ to me and to you is for all. For the saving gospel is all encompassing. One size fits all. So many of us know this. And, and, and we believe this. But day in and day out, what happens? We still struggle to live this out. Because, well, you know, sometimes we care what other people think. <laughs> sometimes we let the public opinion sway us. So why this is then why we're thankful that each day we can return to the cross and the empty tomb, to the forgiveness that is ours in Jesus. But that again, right? Because this then also is where we ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith in Him. To strengthen our faith in Jesus as we learn to love our neighbors. As we learn to live with courageous faith. And I think that that's the other great takeaway from this miracle. Friends, Jesus has placed us here. At this time. In this area, wherever this area may be, whether it's here River Falls or wherever you're watching, he's placed us around these different people in our neighborhoods. And he has us here for a reason. Jesus puts us in places for his plan to happen. And whether we like it or not, sometimes that means we need to be open put our agenda aside. Our schedule to the side for someone else's sake. It's like Jesus did. Only the Holy Spirit can do this work in us, friends. Only the Holy Spirit. And then, then by God's grace, God's grace, we combine that with our courageous faith. When, when we join Jesus, when we live our lives in love and faith to him and to those around us, we live knowing that he's got this. Fills you. 
the same way that he loves us. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts, our minds focused on our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I can invite you to stand now, friends, and join me as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we go to our Lord in a time of prayer this day, continue to lift up all those who are on our prayer list. But we also lift up Lana Meyer and her family at the passing of her brother-in-law, Paul, who we have been praying for for the last several months. We go to our Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, we praise you for your goodness. We praise you for sustaining us day to day in all our needs of body and life, and for delivering to us your Son, so that we may enjoy forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. We rejoice that you have granted to us the Comforter, that we may not be without your guidance and gifts, and we ask you to help us treasure in our hearts all that you have supplied for us and for our salvation. And the Lord bless your church and preserve all your people whom you have called by your word, given new birth in the waters of baptism, and fed and nourished by the communion upon the body and blood of our Savior. Make us perfect in love so that we may keep your commands and do the good works that glorify you. Lord, give to our nation wise and honorable leaders so that we may be protected by good laws and delivered from injustice, prejudice, and hatred. Bless the members of our armed forces who defend us against our enemies and guide us so that we may be good citizens. Bring harmony and peace to the nations that war and violence may cease and we may work together for the common good. Almighty Father, deliver us from a judgmental spirit. Instill within us a repentant heart so that we may seek reconciliation and peace through confession and the forgiveness of sins. Bless those who work within your church to bring peace and unity where there is division, mistrust, and hate. O Lord, bless the homes of your people, that husband and wife may honor their vows of love and fidelity to each other. Unite parents and children in love and affection, that their lives together may be examples of the world of your goodness. Lord, bring to the sick and sorrowing the comfort of your grace, that in the days of their afflictions and in their time of adversity, they may know your presence and healing grace. Especially we lay before you this night Gary and Sam, Melissa and Logan, Irv, Mary, John, Larry, and Susan. Lord, also be near to those who grieve the loss of loved ones, whether from a time past or in Lana Meyer's case and her family, sudden at the passing of her brother, her brother-in-law, Paul. Fill each of these, your children, up with mercy and love. And Lord, according to your good and gracious will, grant them consolation that you are with them, and your tender compassion always surrounds them. Now, O oh Lord, all things are yours, and you have promised to well supply us with all that we need. Give us courage and faith that we may give a confident amen to these prayers. 
certain that you will give to us all that is good and beneficial to our salvation and preserve us from all things harmful. We pray this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshiped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, now receive this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. So I'll find you a favor and give you his peace. Amen. Jesus goes before you. Be blessed. Our usher will let you out and back.